Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks, another edition of Lockdown News in an increasingly insane world. Let's start with Israel. Now, Israel have a population of 9 million and they have already jabbed 3.5 million of that population, which is, what's that, 35% of the population? So that's quite a lot. It's the most that any country has done so far. So it's, it's good to keep an eye on what exactly they are up to over there. And they have recently introduced a health passport. It's called a green passport. And so I saw this tweet today, which is talking about that said passport. The person says, it's being pushed aggressively in Israel as well. They call it the green passport. The Ministry of Health said yesterday, non-vaccinated people could only go to supermarkets and pharmacies. Dark times in Israel. And there's a picture of what I believe is a billboard advert for the passport and that fella there, he looks really happy, doesn't he, to have his jabs and his freedom passport. So is this correct? Let's have a look. So here we have in the Times of Israel, government seeking to sanction businesses accepting unvaccinated customers. It says here, Netanyahu quoted saying vaccine refusers endanger us all while Edelstein predicts vaccinated will go to stadiums and gyms, while others only go to supermarkets and pharmacies. The article says that they are planning to introduce what they call a green badge system by next week, which will enable the vaccinated to attend public activities and venues that are currently closed under lockdown orders. A green badge, eh? What else does it say here? It says, uh, The health ministry is planning to clamp down on Israelis who refuse to vaccinate against the coronavirus and impose severe sanctions on businesses that accept unvaccinated customers and on individuals who forge a document that says they have been vaccinated, Channel 12 News reports. The network says health minister Yuli Edelstein wants to encourage widespread vaccination by offering advantages to those who take the shot but also by limiting the options of those who don't. He says, whoever doesn't vaccinate will only go out to supermarkets or pharmacies while the vaccinated will go to stadiums and gyms, Edelstein is quoted as saying. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is quoted as saying during a cabinet meeting, whoever doesn't vaccinate endangers us all because they can cause the health system to collapse. I wonder, do they have the same uh, hospitals always being nearly overwhelmed in Israel as well, but never quite becoming overwhelmed? So there you go. The tweet is correct. So it's clear to see here that the strategy of Israel was to get a significant number of people jabbed up. Then once that significant number had been achieved, they then pull out the green badge health passport. Like, you know, they just bring it out just like out of a magic hat. And it's now, if you don't get the jab, you can only go to supermarkets and pharmacies. I take that in Israel, if you don't get the jab, you're also now not allowed to go to hospital or you're not allowed to go to the doctors because you're only saying you can go to the supermarkets and pharmacies. How can you get a a prescription for the pharmacy if if you're not allowed to go to the doctor anymore? It's not good, is it? You see how this works? As I've said on here many times before, it does seem that all of these countries, from, from how I've observed it, they all seem to be following the same blueprint. So I take it that once the country, once a country has a significant number of people getting the jab, in this case, in Israel, 35%, then all of a sudden health passports appear and there is an aggressive push on them, literally then telling those who haven't received the jab that you can only go to supermarkets and pharmacies, and that's it, end of story. Is that the plan that we're going to see for the UK? Is that going to be the plan for, say, Ireland, and the similar plan for everywhere else? Is this the blueprint to coerce people into getting the jab and then stuck with a health passport? Seems to be the way. You see, this is the thing. If you put one foot in, you're trapped. These people are now stuck with a passport that they now have to use to go anywhere they want, whether it's their job, whether it's the library, whether it's a cafe. And how long before the government introduce uh, 
requirements for you to have weekly tests as well as your jabs and how long before other elements of measurement are added to it like your carbon footprint or your financial transactions can you not see how much control you're you're given away and you have now lost over your life and here we have another article from today as most Israeli adults get vaccinated from COVID, some wonder when life will go back to normal. It says here, after receiving his first dose of the vaccine in December, Jonathan Livni, 77, assumed life would at last return to normal for Israelis like him. Well, obviously, Jonathan, he hasn't been paying attention. He should come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com or check the news from other countries and he would know that they have no plans of such a thing. Anyhow, it continues. Livni, who lives in Jerusalem, was among the first Israelis to take the shot and become fully vaccinated in January. He received his green badge passport and official certification that he was immune to the disease. But nearly one month later, the passport hasn't done him much good. Even though he's now at a much lower risk, Livni still must obey the country's strict lockdown measures, which bar everyone from a wide range of leisure activities, whether or not they've been vaccinated. It continues the restrictions hit home for Livni a couple of weeks ago. He and his wife, a plastic surgeon, traveled frequently and had planned a trip to Dubai late last month for a medical conference. Their trip was canceled, however, when Israel shut down its airport to limit the virus's spread. He says, I thought it would be a passport to health and passport to freedom, he says. Now they say they're not sure the vaccine works against the British variant or the South African variant. Then I thought it would be a passport for travel, but now if I want to travel, I need to do a test 72 hours before I leave, and then when I come back, I need to do it again. So what good does it do me, he says. Israel's aggressive vaccination drive has become a national source of pride, it says here, but it has not yet heralded the return to pre-pandemic times that many had expected, even as more than 40%, it says here, of Israelis have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, far outpacing the rest of the world. COVID rates remain stubbornly high and the vaccination campaign has slowed. So what does this news from Israel tell us? It says COVID rates are still high, even though 40% have got the jab. It says in this article, the 70 year old fella, he, he still has to get tests to go anywhere. And now the government are basically telling the rest of the population who haven't had the jab, if you don't get the jab, you don't get the passport. And if you don't get the passport, your life will exist of trips to the supermarket and the pharmacy forever. That's called playing hardball. And that's what I would imagine is the blueprint that the UK are probably going to use. You can see all the stories and articles appearing in the media. Complete bullshit articles mentioning, oh, maybe, maybe we should get a health passport. Ministers openly lying, saying they have no plans for a UK passport, even though they all sign deals with companies to manufacture them and produce them digitally back in June last year. And today we hear Boris, Oh, all of a sudden, he's having a cabinet meeting where they are discussing vaccine passports. It's all bullshit. They have got their vaccine passports ready and they will roll them out. And when enough people have got the jab, that's when they will do it. That's the idea. The only way these health passports will not aggressively be pushed onto the UK or in other countries is if not enough people get the jab. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com. It's the only site where I have control over the subscribers. All of these other platforms, I don't. If I get deplatformed from any of these social media accounts, YouTube, Odyssey, Brand YouTube, etc., I lose all of the subscribers. So if you're going to subscribe, do it at HugoTalks.com. Take care and I'll see you later.